Gamers, today we're gonna do the last um, analysis, I guess, of the weekly number three, which is me versus Mista. These are the, uh, before we jump into it, these are the win rates for the weekend, uh, for this weekly tournament. So I wanna say that last week, HRE in weekly number two had like 67% win rate in the June weekly uh, uh, number two. And now in June weekly number three, we got the four lakes, the new map. And the win rates are kind of interesting. Delhi has the highest win rate, but is also the most banned Civ, I think, because it only has 17 games played. Rus has a really good win rate, and Rus was banned out a lot in the high-level play. Then HRE's win rate dropped quite a lot, which I'm very surprised about. I don't know why, because I feel like the Four Legs is a really good map for HRE, plus the Frisian Marshes. So I figured it would at least hold the same win rate, but I guess not. And then we got French at 48%. French, I don't remember the last time they had 150% win rate. Abbasid, uh, Chinese, English not doing too great. And the lowest win rate Civ with 38 games is Mongols, which is crazy to me. That's kind of crazy. 34% win rate. That is very low. That is very, very low. So kind of interesting stats. I just wanted to show that before we jump into it. Uh, these are the civs that were played on each map. Obviously, Rus was played quite a lot on the Four Lakes. And then uh, HRE. China didn't do too well, which I wanted to practice a little bit and see how it goes. But people didn't do too, too well uh, with it. And then here's my win rate for the tournament. So I played zero Abbasid, zero English. I played one Delhi, one Chinese throughout the tournament. I played 1-1 one, one with French, 5-1 with HRE, 3-0 with Mongols. Like, I had 3-0 with Mongols. Imagine if you take away my three wins. Like, quarter of the wins for the whole tournament are mine. It's kind of crazy. I, I think Mongols is still pretty good, too. Uh, and then Roos, two games, but... Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that as we head into the games. Because I thought they were cool stats to show, so I figured, why not? Now... Uh, this is the Grand Finals of the Weekly 3. This is me playing against uh, the Mista. Um, and the first map, I just went with what worked for me, which is HRE. And HRE was my most played Civ. I think in this round and previous round, I think HRE is really, really strong. And I feel like a lot of people still don't value HRE at a high level as they should. I think it might be like no Kappa in the tournament map pool that we're using. Maybe best or second best Civ together with a Rus. Um, I'm not sure if I should be making any kind of Civ tier list, by the way, because the new patch is coming soon. And the Civ tier list would kind of be for the tournaments, uh, which has four legs and Frisian Marcher. So it's a little bit different from the latter. But uh, I'll just say that Rus and HRA are probably the two best Civs, in my opinion, for... Uh, the map pool we're playing, uh, the Red Bull uh, Road to Walla Law tournament. So, Mista brought out a new strat, which was very, very interesting, I gotta say. Um, so, a lot of people on this map, uh, most played Civ was Rus, uh, people play a lot of HRE, people play a lot of French. Um, we haven't seen a lot of English. We've seen some Mongols, but apparently they did pretty bad. But Mista brought up a Civ on this map that I haven't seen anyone use, and it was the Abacids. Now, what he did is he went for double dock uh, very early on, because their uh, docks cost, what is it, 75 wood, 50 wood? I can't remember. I never play Abacid on uh, 75 wood. So, he did double dock, kind of like a boom strategy. And if you go for water, you don't need to go for extra TCs as well, right? There's no point because your docks are the extra workers. So, and because it's Abbasid, uh, you don't require workers to build landmarks. So he had workers fully on wood and gold and then just spammed uh, fish, right? On both sides. Now, the cool thing about uh, Abbasid on this map is because you're not going for extra TCs, you don't need Eco Wing, which reduces your villager cost by 50%. You don't need that, right? Because why would you? You're on one TC and your food income is insane. You actually made a third dock on my side of the map as well. So what Mista did is he went with the Culture Wing uh, and got instantly preservation of knowledge so he can get upgrades. And basically his whole game plan 
is very castle focused. What he will do is he will make a shit ton of barracks, shit ton of um, archer ranges, and just with villagers only on gold and wood, he will do a massive push in castle age. Because his economy of food is so insane, he just has a really, really strong timing and it kind of booms even faster and you will have way more units than you would if you went for two or three TCs. So uh, I think it's a very good strategy and I'm pretty sure we're going to see Abbasid in this map because of uh, what Mista did here uh, from a lot more people. So because I played HRE here, he tries to wall up the relics. TLDR, not going to pay too much attention to that, doesn't work. I pick up four relics, I think. Or all five relics. No, yeah, I pick up all five relics, actually. So that deny didn't work. Uh, but, like, the build that he did, I thought was pretty cool. So I just wanted to kind of explain it a little bit, give you guys a little bit of insight, insight on it. And uh, you can see that he almost doesn't have to start castle while he has triple dog producing ships, which is kind of crazy. Um... And yeah, his economy is just looking like very, very good. He started and he's going into military wing because he's doing a castle push. So it's very strong because you usually don't have military wing in castle with Abbasid. You have military wing in Imperial. So his units are just much, much stronger. Uh, I went with the Regnets. And now we have a little bit of a, uh, you know, I'm trying to get relics. He's trying to deny them kind of thing. He runs away from the wall a lot. I cover with this one and just try to get as much distance or getting them closer to my base basically. I got some men at arms um, trying to kill his spearmen basically and I'm just picking up relics everywhere. I picked up the relic on his side. I got one, two, three relics here and I got one relic in the back of my base that I just picked up. So even though my prelates died you know, the, the chances of me picking these up eventually are pretty high. Now, I do what I love doing, which is fast Imperial. So, with uh, HRE, so even though I had some units, I had some men at arms, I made some prelates, triple barracks. Uh, I'm still on one dock, by the way, but I'm still producing fishing ships. I got the 11-minute uh, Imperial, which I think is pretty good time considering how much I invested into other stuff like a wheelbarrow as well so my plan from here on out is to just boom out with as many villagers as I can while having five relics so I can do something similar to what he's doing basically he's, he's ignoring food and he's going pure wood gold stone but I can also if I get the relics with HRE I can ignore food gold and then I can put my villagers on wood and stone or even more food or even more uh, gold due to relics. So, Palace of Swabia, by the way, is a landmark you want to build ASAP because it just boosts your economy so hard that you want to pull like 20 workers to build it because, yeah, it's just very, very uh, good to do so. So here he's attacking. I don't really have a lot and you can see he's just rallying a shit ton of units. He's got a lot of production buildings and he's just pumping uh, pumping the units. So I think, yeah, I got two relics in my cathedral already and the three relics are still here. So I am getting gold a good amount and I knew that he's gonna do this build because in the semifinals when he played against B, he also did this build and I saw it's very very strong but I felt like I can hold it with HRE and then win. Because it's very hard to kill HRE because of uh, a repair ability, emergency repair ability. So I knew as long as I'm stacking units, my Imperial units will eventually uh, be better, right? And with the gold economy I'll be able to out micro. So here, because I know he's pushing, I know he's committed, like I'm seeing this army here. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get as much stone as possible, so I can make some either bombard towers or I can get a keep and then put a relic in the keep, which if you don't know, uh, boosts his damage by quite a lot, boosts his health, boosts its range, um, damage taken reduced, it's just really, really good. So now what I want to do is just defend, and the army comp that I went for is... Uh, horsemen plus men-at-arms. Men-at-arms because they cost mostly food and some gold. I got the gold income. 
Uh, and horsemen because I want to counter the uh, the crossbows because his army comp is spearman crossbow so I kind of need to uh, you know get something to kill the crossbows. Technically I could have gone for uh, like a bombard as well or mangonel but if I went mangonel he could have made springalds. Uh, if I made bombard he could also make springalds so I feel like just making pure army maybe is better. Especially considering I got this crazy, crazy fishing eco going. I made a galley to prevent uh, any kind of villager uh, sneaking dogs and killing my fishing eco. Um, oh yeah, so here I did something um, that is a very good idea and something that I love doing in my games. So while he's pushing, right, and this is something that a lot of people think is very risky, but it's not, okay? Well, I'm not gonna die over it. Obviously, it's risky losing villagers, but so he's here, right? I know his whole army is here. So what I do is I engage the reinforcements, get a couple of free kills, force him to focus on my army, which I will soon run away backwards. And meanwhile, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set up a keep in between my base and his base. So what this will do is it will allow me to intercept his units a lot easier if he goes through here he won't be able to rally units technically he can shift q them but that brings other problems like i can wall that off and then his units are going to go through the middle but this keep would give you would give me so much power and so much map control plus it's in stealth force so it's very hard to engage so i went for that uh sadly he uh he sees it and he denies it so that does not go up it is what it is sometimes you try it doesn't work out he denies this wood line completely and I'm using emergency repairs to keep this up. So I just go get a keep next to my other wood line because I want to make sure I have enough wood income because there's nothing much I can actually gather right now, right? I can gather these couple of sheep, these berries, and I can, you know, go here for stone or something But because I don't really need gold right now. So I kind of need wood to get some siege going uh one thing that i also did here um he kept his units around uh palace of swabia so i wouldn't kill the ram but i was target firing the units all the time like i was killing so many units with palace of swabia it was very rarely shooting at the ram because i was constantly targeting the uh the spearman so i actually killed a shit ton of units here you can see like it's shooting the back units which shouldn't it should shoot at the ram now you can see it's shooting another spearman because like i said i was uh constantly target firing and i have 10 villagers inside so it's doing really good damage look at that now it's shooting at the, the spearman uh another spearman and now it's going to shoot at the crossbows like i was super focused on making sure i'm targeting that the whole time and um yeah this is where uh i think it shoots mangonel for a long time because i stopped paying attention to it because there was other shit happening uh but yeah i get the relic and uh the muslim thanks so much for the raid i hope you had a great stream thank you thank you um welcome everyone we're doing a mista versus me analysis uh what went well what went wrong what i could do better what i could have done worse so and also discuss the uh, the mista build a little bit can you put the relic in the... Uh, no, you cannot put the relic in Sabia, but you can put it in docks, in keeps, and towers. So, it's pretty nice. So he decides to go for the dock snipe. Obviously, he realizes that's my food income, right? He knows. He goes for the dock snipe. I quickly rotate my units. I manage to kill them off. So basically, now the game is becoming... I had a fight here in front of the keep, which went really well for me. I sniped a lot of units with my Palace of Sabia here. And he's about to lose all these units. So this is where I felt like oh, I'm completely fine. Even when he was at my door, I, I knew that I can't die. Like I just need to gather my units and I'll be more than fine. So I feel comfortable enough to start raiding him, even though he's still at actively attacking me. So I go around, I start raiding a little bit. I was actually, <laughs> funny thing happened. I'm so used to normal maps that I went from uh, these berries to these berries to these deer because I was trying to uh, kill his villagers. And as I came into deer, I was like, where is he getting food? I don't get it. And then I was like, oh right, he has water. Because I'm so, my mind's so used to going for the food income that I completely like, you know, disregard the fact that um, he doesn't need food. So, 
I start raiding the next most valuable thing, uh, which is, you know, stones and, and uh, gold mines. I can also raid woodlands because they're pretty obvious where they're gonna be. Uh, so I just go for the gold. And meanwhile, I push out this side. At this point, the game, I feel very comfortable. I'm still an Imperial. This push, again, not doing much. Someone asked, how can I get this emergency repair? This is only HRE that has this. So right now, I feel comfortable enough to just attack him uh, and mow down this army. I get the villagers out, kill the rams. He's pushing the front, but again, like, it doesn't really matter. He's ahead on villagers, but this can, is gonna change like this. Plus the relics make a massive difference. So right now I try to get a tower here because I have no vision and he kills like three, four villagers. But at this point versus HRE, you cannot just kill villagers. It, it's kind of pointless because of Palace of Swabia and which is why I love rushing Palace of Swabia because it allows you to be greedy and it allows you to lose workers and still be fine. Obviously you don't want to lose workers, but if, you, if you're bad at keeping your villagers alive, this is the best sieve to do it with. Um, or to be bad at keeping them alive. So, my keep has the cannon emplacement, which I got instantly, and it has the bonus range because of this relic. So, it's able to shoot all the way there. You see that range? That's insane. And look how much damage it's doing. Like, that keep is farming his units right now. So, it's super, super strong, and uh, something if you play HRE, you should always try and do. Get the tower, I get the cannon placement, and insta put the relic to buff the tower as well. And yeah, throughout the game, I continue raiding, and right now, um, like I said, with the five relics, the only time I can actually die is from this point to the point where the gold runs out. When the gold runs out, I'm just infinitely ahead. And the reason for that is, I'm about to get the fifth relic, and I'm HRE. So, yeah, Age of Empires 4 is very often about like the gold game and this is a situation where this is just very, very, very good for me. He's trying to set up a keep here. I kind of deny it. I, I lose a lot of the units, but again, it doesn't really matter. He gets a dock here. I get a Hulk and I get some horsemen to kill the dock. So even though I lose the units, for me at this point, my economy is so, so good. Earlier, I was 10 workers behind, now I'm 8 workers ahead, and I have 5 relics, right? Plus I have the, the fishing ships going, which is a lot of eco, they are upgraded as well, by the way. So, even though I'm losing these units, like, he can't really engage into a keep with bombard emplacement, or cannon emplacement, tower of cannon emplacement, this much production, uh, without H4 himself. Like, even if he makes traps for this, it's gonna take so long to kill that... I'll be able to basically overwhelm him with the uh, army. I actually didn't know that he had this dock when we played. Um, otherwise, I would have just sent a few units and killed it. But, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. My goal now is just keep my economy. Uh, get men at arms and land shits. Bombards. And kind of hold and defend with those units. And I was using horsemen to raid all the time. So, you will see me from now on. Um... You know, I might not know where he's getting gold or stone in the moment, but I know where his docks are. And this is a big, big resource income. I mean, look how many fishing ships is just on this side. That's 13 fishing ships that are upgraded twice. So, look, each one carrying 70 food. So what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to get horsemen and just ship queue them into docks and continuously snipe docks over and over, thus killing his food income or delaying his food income for a while, right? And... You know, horsemen for me is very cheap uh, unit because they have so much food. So you'll see them going over and over, um, sniping and trying to just kind of delay his economy. This keep from him, uh, I mean, it goes down pretty fast. I got bombard, so there's not much he can do. Funny thing is, I was making a tower here and a mining camp, and that tower would have seen this dock, but he already had two towers, so I just backed off. Um, oh yeah, there's some men-at-arms running, and I go straight for the dock. And there's just units everywhere. This is a bombard tower as well. And even though he will kill this, he's just trading so, so inefficiently at this point. Loses the dock, and now his food eco just goes to shit. And yeah, he's gonna rebuild it, you know, it's gonna be pretty fast. 
but that's 8 p.m. required. He's gonna need to build that. He's gonna need to select all the ships, send it to this dock, shift Q them back. And uh, for me, that was just a little shift Q command. I got some land ships to harass the gold. And once he got Imperial now, like I said, if I didn't die immediately, I'm 100% fine because in the long run, I just win with sheer amount of gold that uh, I will have from the relics. Uh, also, this relic dropped because it was in the tower. But yeah, more horsemen and I kind of start doing the, you know, the beast thing. I start splitting the map in two. Or not even in two, I, I start getting, you know, two thirds of the map for myself. And the most important part is I try to separate the golds away from him because I know that he is gonna run out of gold eventually, right? He has these three golds, which are very safe, but I wanna keep my golds to myself and kind of prevent any possibility of him uh, getting in there. I get a keep here. He kills some workers, but again, it doesn't really matter with HRE at this point. Uh, the keep goes up, I instantly get the cannon emplacement, and he has to disengage because he only has Cobra. Another thing that I would advise you guys to do if you play HRE, Whenever you get a good keep, a good position on the keep, get a town center nearby as well, if it's far away from your main base, so that you can use auto repair on the keep. Right here I get a town center, and town center will give you the influence, so you can click auto repair on your keep. So now he has bombards, but, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just rebuilding walls, I'm just delaying it. He was pushing on the right side. But there's nothing really to push, right? Like, if you look, um, I, I don't care about this push as much. Like, what is he gonna do? He's gonna run into my base and kill houses, right? There's nothing much to, to kill here. Um, technically, he can attack the farms, but I can just garrison and kill his whole army. Uh, also, there's no uh, veins in this side of the map. Like, uh, there was a stone vein, but I guess it's gone. So, I saw his army move there. I saw him place a keep, which is just to protect the wood lines, and I was like, eh. Not a big deal. My main prio is keeping this alive and maybe putting some pressure on his side. So the moment I saw the army there, I knew that uh, he might not have enough units to defend this. So I just died on the siege. And I popped all his siege, which was a very, very expensive. That's basically a thousand resource per uh, unit there. So 3k gone like that. And... Like I said, because his units are here and I can and I saw that, I knew that, I just decided to dive on the villagers and I actually noticed that he doesn't have boiling oil. So, because he didn't have boiling oil, he put his villagers in the keep, but he had so many. Like if you look, he has 15 in the keep and he has 33 here. So I just decided to fight him. Even if his army was right here attacking my units, I would have still just A moved my, my units into the villagers because he is on one TC, he plays Abbasid, so he cares for his villagers. You know, it's a different situation if he was killing my villagers like this. It's a lot better for HRE to trade that way. And again, all these units that I'm using are not very expensive. I'm bombarding the, uh, the keep as well. He realized he doesn't have boiling oil. Then, because his army moved to the left, which was obvious, right? If you attack the opponent to the left, he's gonna move army to the left. I move my army to the right. And I start working on this keep to uh, break him. And what's going to happen now is he's going to have his army move to the right. Because that's what makes sense, right? He, it doesn't make sense for him to go here now because there's a keep. So he's going to move his army to the right. So the next right thing to do is do a run by to the left. It's kind of playing uh, ping pong with your opponent. So as you can see, I'm doing a push here. Uh, horsemen are queued up to go snipe some ducks. I'm getting some uh, towers here. I'm getting mining camps. I'm just vacuuming all the resources. Sniping the dock on this side. Uh, I was searching for dock here. Oh no, I killed the docks, all right? And then I just shift queued on the uh, on the houses. And that's it. Mist is playing chess, Beast is playing ping pong. It is what it is. But yeah, once I, uh, like his attack, it's one of those things where uh, I call his attack an all-in, not in a negative way, but in a way that versus, eight, like, versus most sieves, that would just be pressure uh, on both sides, like equal pressure, like we're fighting. 
But because I reached Imperial, Atri puts opponent in an all-in situation. And what I mean by that is he needs to do damage. He needs to do serious damage. And if he doesn't, it doesn't matter how many villagers he kills. He needs to do something more than just kill a villager or two or ten or even twenty. He needs to do more. And that's why I love playing HRE because it puts opponent into these uh, uh, all-in situations. Maybe the guy is not an all-inner, but you put them in an all-in situation by forcing them to attack you and overcommit. Because at that point, when I got Imperial, if he says, okay, I'll go Imperial as well, he's already behind, right? So the time to do damage, I feel like he's long gone. And because I saw the strategy he was going to use made it a little bit easier for me as well. So so this is the next game. Um, this is the, the game I lost. The, the final score, spoilers, uh, was 3-1 for me. This is the game that I lost. Um, as Frisian marches, I don't feel too comfortable in this map with a lot of sieves. I feel comfortable with sieves that shouldn't work here, and I don't feel comfortable with sieves that everyone plays and that everyone says they're good. So what happens here is a bit unfortunate um, for me, not so unfortunate for him. I actually didn't know that um, a sheep can spawn this close to the middle. Like I thought. The sheep uh, spawn is like starts from here. I don't know if I just didn't see. I don't know what, but I didn't even bother scouting there because I thought sheep can spawn from here downwards, and I thought that they can't spawn around stealth forests, right? <clears throat> Turns out they can. So he just comes in here and literally takes eleven of my sheep. Kick the mother. So yeah, that was not great. Um, I, it's not why I lost the game, but obviously it's a good move from him because I'm Pepega. But uh, yeah, that, that already, you know, 11 sheep is quite a lot. Like you'll see the, the sheep difference between him and I. Like my sheep count looks like a normal one on one game. His sheep count looks like he's been fucking... Uh, uh, collecting sheep uh, for years now. So yeah, he has a pretty good sheep count. Ah, but okay, it's not it's not terrible. You know, it's not bad or whatever. But obviously, it could have been a lot better. So <coughs> my build honestly was pretty bad this game, and like I lost this game, and I was like, I I don't know what I did, and I should not do this again. That game felt like you were experimenting with Duke DC. Dude, I... Don't, like, don't even ask me. Dude. Uh, I play French, usually. Like, and again, why did I do this? I have no fucking idea. So... I usually, when I do go to DC in French Mirror, I go with, like, night production into a slower second TC. This game, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get enough gold for Wheelbarrow and I'm gonna defend with Spearmen only. That was my plan. And the whole build was trash. Like, look what happens. First of all, like, I played really bad this game. First of all, I forget, like, I'm like, okay, I'm defending with Spearmen. I forget to get 75 gold to upgrade Spearmen. Like, that's already bad. Second, my spearman, one spearman should already be out. I didn't make barracks in time. Then, when I do make barracks, I actually don't have food to make spearmen. Like, you'll, you'll see in a second. I have four on food, which is not enough. Like, now I'm gonna struggle for food. I literally, look, I'm gonna make a spearman and I can't produce a second one. I have enough stone, I don't have nearly enough wood. Look. I'm not producing Spearman at all. I don't have the gold to upgrade Spearman. So now I'm in a situation where I can't make units and I can't make a TC because I want to make TC here. Look, I'm still not producing Spearman. Like, I don't have any food whatsoever. So I have one Spearman. Meanwhile, he's about to... Yeah, he has a third knight and I have one Spearman. Which, to put it in perspective, I should have like six, seven. So then I put my villagers on gold to get the upgrade for Spearman. He finds it instantly. So I don't even, uh, I don't even get that. So now, which is even funnier, now I get enough resources for TC, but I can't place it anywhere. 
And I'm just, I was just like, fuck me. Like, I knew from the start, I, the moment I didn't have enough food for a spearman, I knew I lost this game. Because this is like, huge mistakes that I was doing. Like, I've never done this version of 2TC, and you can see, like, I completely fucked it up. Then I went to make a TC here, and then I realized his army is there. So then I was like, uh, where do I send my workers? So I was like, okay, I'll just send them on food. So now I got no wood income, right? I got no wood income. So eventually I run out of wood, so I'll be housed because I didn't have wood. <laughs> like, it was, it was, it was bad. Like, this game was fucking bad. So yeah, I go for the TC here. He kills the villager here on gold. I get the TC up. But again, I have five spears, six spears. Uh, I upgraded him as well, poggers. And he has seven knights. I have six spears. Here he goes for harassment, which I felt like I defended really fucking bad. Like, I should have walled here or something. I was struggling to defend. He kept killing villagers on my gold. Because now I'm like, I was scouting, right? Uh, and I knew that... Why is he making a second tower? I knew that he's on two stables, and I knew that he has no archer range. So I'm like, okay, I just keep making spears. I secure my gold, and I go castle. Like, I'll be good. I'm on two TCs. He's ahead on workers. By two, even though I want two TC because I keep losing workers everywhere. And again. So he's ahead on workers, he's ahead on tech, he's ahead on units, and he has cowering. So. Kick W. So he starts. Okay, he start. I didn't even see that. He starts Guildhold and switches to Royal Institute. Meanwhile, uh, was this the time? Oh yeah, this is the time where I get housed because I don't have fucking wood. So I'm literally, I'm gonna get supply blocked on both of my TCs and I didn't even start a house yet. Now I'm sending villagers to gold. Uh, you can see, this game was a disaster. This game, like a disaster is an understatement, I think, uh, what happened here. Oh, and I made this wall, by the way, which didn't do shit, because he just ran past it. <clears throat> Looks like me playing. Yeah. He comes in here again. He hits castle. And from here on out, I'm trying to get the castle. Uh, then I do... I go for guild hole, because I don't need the upgrades on the thing, because I'm fucking... I don't have resources for that shit. Then, I decide to build it with three villagers. Like, literally, I have no clue what the fuck I was doing in this game. Like, you don't build a castle landmarks with three villagers. Ever. Why did I do it? I have no fucking idea. And then I realize, I'm like, oh yeah, I should pull more workers. Still no walls, by the way, anywhere. Now I make a wall, which... Like, it walls of this, but then I don't have food. I, th this is the only food I got. So, it was a really, really really bad game for me like yeah he took my sheep but that didn't that's not why i lost like it's not like oh i had no sheep copium i couldn't find sheep it's like i just then i try to wall off more here he goes men at arms and royal knights so funny thing i enter castle and i had no wood to make archer ranges <coughs> for crossbows so then I have too much gold, and I'm rushing to get crossbows out, and then I run out of fucking food. And then I just kill him. Check that one. This hurts to watch. You know what's funny? This was so bad for me that when I lost, I wasn't affected at all. Because I was like, that was so fucking atrocious. I'm just gonna go next game. 
You know, like, I wasn't even tilted for losing that, because I was like, I did everything wrong. Like, I fucked up everything there. Like, there wasn't, like, there wasn't a thing in that game where I'm like, yeah, I play, that one I did well. You know what I mean? Everything I did there was fucking terrible. Yeah, actually, n no joke, that loss tilts me less than if the game is close and I throw it. Like, if the game is close and I throw it, that's tilting, right? Because it's like, oh man, I played so well, but I lost. But that game, I played so fucking bad that I'm just like... I, I was actually like... Because I didn't stream it, and I was like, man, that was actually so bad. I was like, I... I don't know what to say. I was like, just let's just play the next game. Let's just play the next game. <laughs> let's just forget about that one. And it worked out pretty well. Like, I wasn't tilted at all. How much did not streaming help your minds in that game? Um... I mean, I won Castle this week 2-1. I'll just say if I streamed, I think I would have lost 2-0. 100%. If I play, if I streamed tournament, I would have lost to Kazva 2-0. Because I would be too tilted to play. But like I said, when I'm alone, I'm like, I don't tilt in tournament games. I tilt on stream in tournament games, but not, not off stream. I don't know why that is, but... Thank you, no cursing. Appreciate it. You taught me so much. Thanks for the good times. Good gaming as well. Thank you, appreciate it. So, this game, uh, we played uh, Dry Arabia. Uh, this was my map pick. And I picked Delhi. Um, I'm decently confident in my Delhi. I don't think it's my top sieve or anything, but I felt pretty good. Um, I knew there's a chance he will pick English or Mongols. Uh, or I suspected, right? Because he played French already. We both banned Rus. Don't think he would play HRE or China on this map. And so the options were he's either going to play Delhi, Mongol or English on this map. So I felt pretty confident in those matchups. I didn't mind them at all. And, uh, you know, when I saw his Mongols, I was like, okay, there's a good chance he's going to tower rush. So, and he did. So he tower rushed. Um, I deleted the mining camp so he can't get the pillaging bonus. And I saw that he is going for tower rush right here. So I just kept my horsey boy. The other horsey boy went to get more sheep. I got a decent amount of sheep. Uh, 11. How many is that? 15 sheep. And he's running out. So th this was a, a pretty good sheep collection for me. He... Did he have a second scout? Actually, I don't remember. No, I don't think he had a... Or second scout. I don't think he had a scout. I think he just had a con. So, and obviously he was very... Let me see his vision. Uh, I mean, he has whole map revealed. Oh no, he doesn't. It was yeah, okay. It was it was still locked onto me. I was like, how the fuck does he have whole map revealed with Khan and he's here? But yeah, if you look at the mini map, this is his vision. So he didn't get a lot of uh, you know scouting, and obviously that's why I got more sheep. Um, um, it's better for him. There's a guy in AGC TV chat saying he wanted to go to BC stream and see Malding when BC seems to be losing. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually got sent that, and uh, I am happy to say I perma banned that guy in my chat. So, uh, to that guy, fuck you. For two reasons, because you're banned, and because I won. So, thank you. Anyway, um. So here, like, I'm just allowing the tower rush to happen. Banning doesn't prevent watching. Well, I want him to watch because it increases my viewership count. So he's supporting me while hating me. So it's perfect. Uh, and I don't get, don't need to read his comments. So it's literally like triple win right there. Uh, win, win, win. Win, win, win. Uh, anyway, so he's tower rushing. I get the wheelbarrow done uh, here, which is very nice. Um... Kind of like the most important upgrade. 
And he made another tower here, which I found a bit weird. I guess he wanted to get vision of the tree line, but I think a second tower would be better on the other side. But either way, he goes for it here. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just chilling. And my plan here uh, is to go for Horseman Archer. Uh, I made a mistake, I think last week when I lost to uh, to Casva, one of the games I lost was this matchup. And I lost because I made only a few units and then I got overwhelmed with units. So this time I was like, I'm not gonna fuck around. I'm gonna make a shit ton of units and make sure I have enough to play with. So, um, the moment his tower is finishing, I just move my lumber camp here, thus forcing him to make another tower on this side. Uh, stable and arch range going up. I don't have gold because I only got 200 to age up. So now I'm going with three workers to kind of speed up the process a little bit so we can start scholars. They're very important. And now I'm going to start my eco upgrades. A lot of people ask me uh, over like Kick W, you forgot upgrades again. I, I didn't. Like I started my double broad axe. This one I'm going to start in a second. And then mining, I start in like 10, 20 seconds because my mining camp was destroyed and I didn't have mill. So I literally had no eco buildings to uh, start the upgrades. Um, here I'll start making units. Um, I have a scout here just to make sure he doesn't tower my gold from like a weird angle or something. And right now I'm aware that, you know, what he's doing, I have a scout here and I slowly push this out. now. The moment I see his army move north, uh, I see this as a chance to uh, to get the towers down. Because these towers will get upgraded the moment he reaches feudal. And they're going to be super annoying because they're going to deny my wood here. I have to go to the other side and it's more exposed. And he's going to deny berries. If I want stone, that's down to shitter as well. So the moment I saw his units go up, I made an instant decision to... Uh, I killed the villager here, which was very nice. I make an instant decision to pull 18 workers and just burn down his, um, his towers. He doesn't even bother trying to upgrade him because he knew they were going to die. He gets horsemen out. I get my horsemen. So now I know. He has spearmen, he has horsemen. So I know that he is somewhat committed to feudal. Uh, it's not like a pure castle rush. And I see a villager here. So. Um, I saw villager moving upwards, so I thought he's gonna tower every single sacred side, but I think he was moving to do another tower here, which obviously because I destroyed the towers didn't work out. Uh, so now my goal is to, from here on out, just play it as a normal game. Like, the way I see this, the way I see games like this, the game's reset, right? It's a little weird, but it's reset, and I'm just playing a normal game now. Like, I'm producing units, my goal is to get sacred sets. Unfortunately here, I run into uh, Spears and lose a scout, which is pretty bad because scouts are really important. Uh, I get the mill here, I'm getting my eco upgrades reset or started again. And uh, yeah, I went with this scout to see if there's a tower because like I said, I saw villagers going upwards. So I saw no tower, so I was like, okay, no tower, no units there. Uh, I kept my scout in this bush and on the way there to see if he's gonna ride in with horsemen because I wanted to quick wall this site so it's safe for me to, to basically get it. I check here as well but I don't think I actually yeah I didn't see the tower. I went to check if there is a tower but I didn't see it and it was still upgrading the um, the arrow sled so that was kind of funny. Um, and yeah he's trying to place the tower now I see it that was a misclick and uh, I just start walling this off and once you wall this off it's it's not immune to getting killed but even if opponent wants to kill the sacred or recapture the sacred side it takes so long to destroy the walls and stuff that you can uh, respond you can reinforce um, that yeah it wastes a lot of time so here I realize oh shit he has tower I assume he has tower on the bottom as well he didn't so I just run away with my scholars. I don't want to lose them. I snipe his worker and I capture this one and I'm very happy at this point. Even one sacred side is pretty good. Uh, so hell yeah, brother. Oh, and this is... Uh, 
I don't know if it was this moment, but I actually realized something real nice for me. I realized that he has no pastures without actually scouting the pastures. Because I think I I, I had my units here and I and I look to the side like this, and you can see that there's only two deer. And I was like, Mud Trucker. He has no pastures because he is on the food outside of his TC, which you don't do as Mongo. So I knew that he is, in a way, committed to feudal or castle in a big way. <clears throat> because eventually when he does run out of food, he needs to build pastures, which is going to slow down his everything quite a lot. So I knew that as long as I survive and keep going, the game's going to go better for me. I send a scout, I confirm. I get the sacred site, I lose the scout again, as you do, and then I just go for uh, for the sacred site, and at this point, like, if you look at my army, plus four scholars, that's a pretty good amount of healing, so I start walling this off, as you do. Like, he, he engages here, but, like, with scholars, it just it's just not gonna work. I set the tower of fire, sniping the spearmen, uh, I get the sacred site. Very nice. And at this point, like, I felt really good about the game. Like, two sacred sites at a high level, it's like... I feel like you almost can't lose. It's just so much gold income. Uh, even though he's gonna recapture this one, I capture another one. I'm going castle, and now I can take the relics, so... It's just a very, very good situation for me, and I feel like the tower rush didn't really do anything. You're lucky with this game? Thank you. I hope you uh, get lucky to... Uh... Anyway. Um... <clears throat> Thank you. I uh, I appreciate that. Um, I wish you all the luck in the world so you can jump out of that, that plastic league. I believe in you, buddy. And even if, when I don't believe in you, luck will carry you through. So... Um, yeah, he recaptures this one, but like I said, I'm already going castle. He's going castle, but uh, if you look at the army, I have 34 versus 25, and I'm pretty sure scholars are not counted in army, if you look at the uh, military count here. I mean, even if they are, they're fucking healing, you know? So, yeah. I'm getting the uh, the moment this finishes, I'm going to start fire up my upgrades. Yeah, I'm super lucky, yeah. Um... So yeah, I send my scholars uh, to all the relics, and I start uh, mowing them down one by one, as you do. Dude, this 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 scholar went from here all the way around to get this relic from him, and I actually got it. I rewall this, and look, like this is what I'm talking about. I rewall this. Okay, this scholar is a bit stupid. It's because I clicked on the minimap. But yeah, I captured that, and again, he needs to invest so much into killing this, that, you know. Uh, and now he's focused so hard on trying to prevent sacred sites, that I don't actually need to defend sacred sites. I can just let them recapture, then I just kill the horse, re-wall and recapture it. It's way easier, right? So what I do, is while I'm building up my uh, Protoss death ball, I just go uh, and raid his base. And, uh, <laughs> so he's getting a, a shaman out to get a little relic. Uh, here I see the villagers. I try to chase them. He intercepts me, doesn't work out. But his shaman comes out to take this relic, and he's like... The fuck? Where the fuck is my relic? Where's my relic? And I'm like, fuck you, shaman. So yeah, this caller takes the longest trip, and then takes the longest trip back, and makes it home, by the way. And that, that, I dare say, is lucky. You know what I mean? Lucky. Yeah, that was a lucky relic spawn for me, because it's behind his base. And I was luckily able to move all the way around, and avoid his defenses. That's what luck's all about. So he went Mangudai Lancer, which I've seen some people use against elephants, try to... Uh, beat the elephants with that and again, uh, you know, he Decaptured this so I just run in re-wall recapture 
And, uh, yeah. Um, by the way, I got a confirmation here that he's still uh, on berries. So I, and, and he had uh, workers here, right, on deer. So I know that he still has no pastures. Uh, I mean, yeah, he has one now, but there's no eco there, right? So that I knew that it's basically like times on my side because he has vacuumed two deer packs uh, Berries here like yeah, he has berries here and berries there But that's not the greatest food income right and they're gonna run out pretty fast. So I felt like I was in a pretty good spot uh, Meanwhile, I have so much food remaining like I have deer here deer here. I've got berries so I'm still in a pretty good spot and the only thing that's left to do I do some raiding here you know, as you do, and, you know, I did the deli thing, you know, abusing the broken. I'm sorry, I called for this shit to be nerfed, and I still hope it will be nerfed, but, uh, it is what it is. I, I think that stackable healing with scholars is absolutely broken with herbal medicine. And, uh, I get enough stone for two keeps, I place one as, like, a backup point. I just push, I placed the second one the moment I saw his army to like wall off a little bit and just um, Well, just so I wouldn't die basically He goes in elephants in the front I put scholars like here so they can heal the elephants um, I had a lot of horsemen as well that are upgraded And look at this bad boy. I want you to pay attention like this these horsemen attacking villagers is like wasted damage Right, it's not going on my army. I think I kept all four elephants, by the way. Look at this little guy. He's coming in hot. Lucky keep, I know. No, no, but you're about to see luck, all right? Lucky keep, lucky army positioning, lucky target firing with the healing. Lucky relic right here. Look at this. So, someone told me, or asked me, whatever you want to call it, that I made a mistake, right? That I should have put this color deeper so I can get the whole army. And I've waited for this moment to tell you that you are wrong. If I moved this color here, it would have died to Mangudai target fire. So what I did is I moved Scholar just far enough to get the melee units without Mangudai being able to shoot at my scholar. See that? You see that line? It's rinsing all the melee is not in range of Mangudai. Lucky scholar move, I know. So I start wall alloying. I don't need to take anything. Even if I make him move back, I'm still winning because it keeps going up. So he charges in with the Lancer. He target fires, but look at these two boys. I target fire too, brother. I target fire. And I start healing. This is uh, seconds before disaster. And I take the melee horses as well, by the way. Fucking lucky. Any time so. And uh, a tip for you guys, whenever Delhi has herbal medicine, do not try to kill a monk that's holding a relic. Just run away. You're not gonna kill it. If there's any healing, you ain't killing it. So just run. Now, the last game, I can't see it in my match history. Let me check again. <clears throat> I don't know why. Yeah, I can't see it. Let me check on Mista's account. Is Mista online? No, there's no... What? The match isn't here. It never happened. How's this even possible? I've never had this before. Yeah, so, okay, anyway, well, I could go through the VOD, but I CBA. So, the last game would happen, uh, I'll give you guys a TLDR, and you can watch it at e at the uh, EGC TV stream. Uh, last game would happen, I'll give you a short TLDR, you know, 10 minutes later. Um, it was me playing Mongols versus his English. His English is really, really good. I've said this before. Uh, when Mister was super active, his English was probably the best by far out of anyone, I think. And um, luckily, I I knew luckily uh, I knew what his style with English was. I knew that he likes going double stable. So if you try to, uh, okay. So let me tell you something. There was a point 
where he made a barracks in front of my scout and I moved away and he canceled it. So I think that he thought that I don't know that. But I had the eagle, aka the hawk, from the scout from Mongols, just at the edge of the stealth forest. So I actually had vision of him canceling. But I don't know if he knows that. So he tried to mind game me by canceling the barracks. But I saw it, and then I went around and I saw double stable. So then I produced spearmen. So he started producing horsemen. But then he saw my spearmen, so he stopped producing horsemen, and I stopped producing spearmen, and then we both went castle. Uh, I don't know if the casters caught that or not, but yeah, I've played against Mister before, and he does like to cancel barracks when it's like 99% done, to make you think he's going to make spearmen, so you wouldn't make horsemen. But then he has no spearmen, and he goes his own horsemen. So he kind of counters what you were supposed to counter him with. Um, but yeah, that game turned, uh, I will say that game was pretty unlucky for me. Uh, if you guys watched it at AGC TV cast, what ended up happening is throughout the game, I think I lost like seven or eight villagers because I kept fucking running a villagers straight into his army. And I'm just like, how is this? Like, I remember just thinking in the game, like, how is this possible? And I checked the, uh, 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 the VOD to see if I was running through scouts or something. I wasn't. Every time I would go to build a tower, I would literally, like, his army, like, imagine this is a, imagine this is a map, right? This whole thing. His army would be moving from here to there. And my villager would be running from here downwards. And it literally just fucking hit the army every single time. And I'm just like, I, I think I lost seven villagers. No, no, he was definitely going to intercept it, right? But it kept running directly into the units. Like, obviously he wasn't randomly moving his army around. Like, he was trying to prevent the, the, the towers. But every time he would move to the right that's when i sent the villagers to the right and i'm just like oh my god so i actually got pretty behind on villager count because i kept losing villagers uh but eventually i managed to set up towers in front of his base i denied his uh lancers or knights and i started making a lot of siege units which is the weak point of english in castle and i managed to completely block his gold uh, I just kept making spearmen, crossbows, uh, archers, men-at-arms. Eventually he pushed, we had one big battle and he lost and uh, GG. So yeah, he predicted like, obviously he knew that I'm gonna try the tower, so he tried to prevent that, but I just kept running my villagers into it, it was, it is what it is. But overall, um, I think like Mista obviously played pretty well and I think he has like very uh, unique ideas about the game, which I think is great for the game and great for the scene as well. And I think uh, whenever he's back to, you know, playing every week, which I think he said he might, right? He might be playing again next week. Because initially it was supposed to be like taking a break till August or something, but I think he mentioned he might be playing again. I can't say for sure. So yeah, overall, I think uh, it was a good series. I hope uh, I explained some things to you guys and I hope you guys learned something as well. But either way, that was a uh, weekly uh, Road to Wallala number three. Won the first one, lost the second one, won the third one. This coming weekend is the monthly, which I cannot participate. It's for uh, 16 players that are going to be playing for the spot at the Red Bull Wallala in, in uh, Germany at the Heidelberg Castle. Uh, but I might be playing some kind of show match. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's it. If you guys enjoy these, uh, whether you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, I might do more of these in the future. Maybe I'll do some casting on the um, over the weekend because I can't play in it. So I might do some casting. We will see. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, <coughs> let's keep going.